Hey guys, this is Jerry Smith here with Jerry.Education back with another video. Today we're going to talk about how to set up a paper in Microsoft Word 2013 in MLA format. So to do that, I pulled out an old paper that I wrote a long time ago and took out all the formatting. And we're going to go through one at a time and add in the things that need to be added in order for this to be in MLA style. Now one thing I will tell you is professors often have their own requirements for how to do the heading. That is the part with your name, their name, the name of the class, and so on. So whatever they tell you is what goes, but this is kind of a generic, general way that these type of headings are put in. Uh, and as best I know, this is consistent with MLA 7. Um, now, when you get down to the bottom and my citations are in the older style, I didn't bother fixing those because the part I'm worried about is the spacing and things like that. So let's get started. All right, the first thing you'll notice is that this isn't quite single spaced, like this paragraph isn't quite single spaced. And for whatever reason, between each paragraph, there's this crazy amount of random space and I can't click in there to do anything. The reason being is Microsoft made a very weird decision with Office 2007 and 2010 and 2013 to include some rather unconventional spacing as the default. So we're going to fix that first. And we're just going to select the entire document because the whole thing is currently not right. So to select the whole document, you have two options here. You can do control A to select it. Or if you're not really into keyboard shortcuts, you can do select and select all. It does exactly the same thing. Okay. And uh, just keep in mind, there's numerous ways to go about doing these things. I'm going to show you a slightly old school way, but it also gives you the best view of all the document spacing properties at once. So I'm going to go right here to the paragraph group and there's a dialog launcher in the corner. So click that dialog launcher and this is going to give us an old school box that's been around forever in uh, Microsoft Office. So what I want to change here is these two things. By default Microsoft has included spacing after at 10 point which basically means this amount of space between two paragraphs is just like a 10 point character so I'm gonna set that to zero you can see the little preview down here uh, moves up okay also we have uh, the line spacing set to multiple which is funny because it's only 1.15 it's not really multiple but I guess it is greater than one we're just gonna hit the drop down and set this to double now what this is effectively going to do is remove this extra space between the paragraphs that's what this spacing before business was all about and at the same time it's going to put two lines of space between each line which is for most academic papers that's what you want the reason being for that is that supposedly it gives your instructors room to write and make corrections and suggestions between your lines. I have no idea if that actually gets done a whole lot, but um, that's what I was always told. So I'm gonna click OK. Now this spreads the paper out somewhat. So that's great. This is what it should look like, up to this point anyway. So between each paragraph there's no more or less space than there is between any other line. We can tell it's a new paragraph because tab has been pressed. Okay. So now um, I'm going to take this title and center it. And please, whatever you do, do not center a paper or uh, center a line by pressing spacebar or tab or whatever because you're never going to get it totally centered. So I'm going to hit this. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and fix this. Most um, papers that you submit to professors should not be fully justified. So I'm just going to do control A again. I just now noticed this paper was like that. We're going to set it to the default of left line. 
okay? And that's left line. So there's left, center, and right line, and this was full justify or just justify. So now I'm going to, and I don't have to select the line, actually. As long as you're in that line, which is technically a paragraph, you can always click that and center a line. Okay, so now I'm going to move down to my work cited. Okay, and that goes on its own um, page. By the way, I'm going to show you how to put it on its own page. You'll see that here I just clicked this little um, icon. You don't have to click this icon to do this, but this thing here is called a pill crow. And when you click it, it shows all your paragraph marks anywhere where you pressed enter, anywhere you hit space bar, there's a dot between words. It's really great. You can see here it says page break, and uh, that's because I've added a page break. So I'm going to delete that page break. And what you'll notice is my work cited came up on this line. So what I'm going to do is insert, like hit enter one time after... I get done with my paragraph, okay? And then to insert a page break, you go to page layout. And right here there's an option for breaks. Hit the drop down and say page. And that added it back. And we do have one extra um place where uh enter was pressed. So I'm just going to go to the left of that little paragraph mark and press delete. And uh, the delete key, which is not the same as backspace, will delete anything on the right-hand side of the cursor. So that's how I got that page brick in there. Okay, so I'm going to go back home and we'll turn off the lovely paragraph marks. Also, if you want to do a page break, you can hold control and press enter. And wherever the cursor is, it will add the page break. So now with works cited, and remember this um, this citation style is old, so don't use the exact citation style. I would recommend uh, looking up Son of Citation Machine for that. But um, your works cited for MLA or APA should always have a hanging indent of one half inch. So a hanging indent basically makes it look like a flagpole hanging on a building okay you're gonna have this part will be your um, flagpole and then the stuff below it for each line is gonna look like a flag hanging from the pole and there's gonna be an indentation about that much so the first thing you're gonna do is highlight all of your work cited and then we're gonna go right up here to the little uh, paragraph settings dialog launcher and this is called a special indentation. See, you got the indentation. And there's two kinds of special indentations. We're going to do the hanging one. And we're going to do half inch. And you'll see what happened to the little preview down here is it moved the second line over by half an inch. So the first line of a paragraph that has a hanging indent is going to uh, be anchored to the far left of the margin. And then anything below that is going to be indented. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. We have a hanging indent, which is what you should have your papers set up like. Another thing I just saw, we need to take works cited here and center it. So I'll just click in the paragraph with works cited and center it like so. Okay. One more thing I'm going to show you how to add is automatic page numbers so that it'll have my last name a space and then the page number right here in the uh, right um, part of the header so to get to the header which is the thing that will be repeated at the top of all pages I'm just gonna double click okay and then we're gonna write a line there's actually another way to do this but we're just gonna go to the right so now that we've right aligned, I'm going to type Smith and then a space. And what I want to put now is the page number um, that actually indicates what page I am on. So we want this to automatically change. Now if I just put in page, or, or if I put in my name, Smith, and type a 1, notice that on all my pages it says Smith 1, which is not correct. 
right? This one here should be Smith 3, Smith 2, and so on. So what we have to do is actually insert a page number using a special method in the header and footer tools. And this um, tab only shows up whenever you're actually in the header or the footer. And um, it says design. So I'm going to click on that. And right here is how you can insert page numbers on the left. So I'm going to hit the drop down. And you might think that you would say top of page. But if you do that, it's going to delete out <clears throat> where I typed in Smith. And I can show you that real fast. So if I do top of page and I do plane number three, it's all good and everything, but it deleted out Smith. And that bothers me. Now, I could just type Smith right here, but I don't want to do that. To me, that feels like the computer is telling me what to do. So I'm going to undo this. Oddly enough, to just insert a page number there, I'm going to go to current position and choose pay, plain number. And basically what this means is wherever the cursor is is where it's going to put the number. Okay, so now we've got Smith 1, 2, 3, and so on. Some professors may tell you that they want a different header on the first page. If that's the case, you've got another option up here, different on first page. So I clicked it, and now my first page header is going to be different than all the others. So if they don't want you to put the page number on the first page, that's basically what you do. You set it up for the whole document first, and then choose different first page. And when you do that, it'll go away on the first page. And I guess the general consensus there is that your name is already on the first page and it is, uh, you know, has your heading and stuff on it. I don't know. It just depends on what your professor tells you. Like I said, they can override anything I'm telling you here. This is just how to technically and physically set the paper up according to the most common uh, method. But I'm going to uncheck this and bring that back so that all of these are the same. Well, there you have it, people. Uh, we have taken a MLA paper that was not formatted properly in Word 2013. And we have went through, changed the spacings. We've centered some stuff. We added a page break right here. We set up our work sided uh, with a half inch hanging indent. I'm going to close the header and footer, by the way. Set that up with a half inch hanging indent. And inserted a header with our last name, a space, and a page number. I think that should be enough to get you guys through most MLA style papers that you have to do. And um, you can find this paper on jerry.education if you want to download it and follow along with this. Have a great day.